Okay, so we put all of our animations, our sprites in there. So we've got our bat, we've got our ghost, our coffin, and our jack-o'-lantern. Now a couple things. We want to turn off the visibility of jack-o'-lantern, bat, and our ghost at the beginning. So to do that, we're going to do that outside of our draw loop, and we're going to put those things like where we when we create our thing. So our jack-o'-lantern we're going to turn the visibility off. So we're going to set this to false. And then if I run that, you'll see that jack o lantern doesn't actually exist anymore. And then I'm going to do the same type of thing for the ghost. I turn his visibility off. And I'm also going to turn the visibility of my bat off. So bat.visible is false. And my ghost.visible is also false. So now when I start it, I just have a coffin. I'm going to put some text up here that says Happy Halloween and, and so forth, but I'm going to first um, do a gray. So I'm going to create a background that's got a gray rectangle and then kind of a whitish, grayish, you know, very light gray uh, moon will be up here. So that would be in my background section right here. So the background is black and then I'm going to draw um, a rectangle, but before I do that I need to do my fill color. So I'm going to do a no stroke and a fill and I'm actually going to go into my color picker um, so I can get an RGB value for this. So I'm going to go like this grayish um, kind of yellow something. I don't know, kind of like that. I like that. Let me use this hex code. Uh, actually, I'll just use the RGB code. So copy this. Go back to here. Then for my fill, I'm going to take in my RGB. RGB. And I'm going to highlight and paste those values. I'm going to reset, rerun. That looks good, but now I will need to make it so it's 400 wide, 200 tall, and then put it at 0, 0. So my rectangle is going to be at 0, 0. It's going to be 400 width and 200 in height. And there we go. I'm actually going to bring it down just a touch. So instead of only 200 tall, I'm going to make it uh, 250. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to actually edit my um, coffin here. See how it's, eh, it's eh, probably will be okay. Uh, I'm not going to put a moon, so I need a, another fill. And then I'm going to do an ellipse. Put those in. So let me go back to color picker. And line that up to there. Looks pretty good. Copy that. Here, RGB, highlight those, paste. And then I'm going to put my ellipse, that's way too big. Let's make it like 50 and 50. And this is going to be at 350. Maybe 75. Let's try that. That's not bad. Now I could randomly pick that a spot along there. That'd be kind of cool. So instead of always being um, in that same Y coordinate or X coordinate, I could just do this as a random number. And I'll make it between 50 and 350. That'd be kind of a cool feature to add in there. Whoa! Do I want it to move like that? What's happening? No, every time it draws it, it draws it in a new spot. So I should do this random number as a variable outside of the loop. So down in my variables section, I'm going to call this uh, moon x. And I'm going to say that it equals, and now I'm going to do a random number from 50 to 350. 
So what this does now is it creates a variable moon x, and now I can just say whatever moon x is, put it there. That way when I run it, every time I run it, it puts it in a new location. That's what I want. Cool. Now I want to be able to, I'm going to put happy, happy Halloween at the top. So this is going to be a text. So I'm going to come back to show text so I can actually put a comment in. So my background goes first. I'm going to do uh, my text right here. So under drawing, um, I'm going to do a fill color. Uh, this one's going to be orange, but I'm going to do another custom color on this. I like custom colors. I think if you can do custom colors, you do custom colors because they're the best. Ooh, I like that. Copy that. Uh, I'm going to go back to block mode. Sometimes it's a little easier. I'm gonna pull this RGB. I like control V to paste it. And then I'm going to do um, text size. Let's do uh, 40 pixels. And then put it, align it. Center and center. To be capitalized, it looks like. And this one's going to be and I'm going to put this around 200 and this would be good. Perfect. Now this is a little too uh, not dark enough for my liking. So I'm going to go back in here and darken that up. Show text mode. There we go. I'm going to move that moon down. Uh, I'm okay with that. It's kind of neat. Yeah, I like that. Works for me. We put some more uh, text uh, down here that will tell the user what to do um, in that space. So, I'm going to do another fill. Actually, let's see how that orange looks down here. We'll just do another text box. We'll say click mouse to reveal the jack o' lantern. And let's put this in the Y value of like 300. Oh, way too big. Font size. 12. Okay. And then we're going to put this not at 0, but let's put it at 100. Let's go to 450. There we go. I'm going to make this a different color. So I'm going to copy this. There. I'm going to go back to my original and give some of this range. There we go. Move it up just a touch. So instead of being at 300, let's do 280. There we go. Click the mouse to reveal the jack o' lantern. Okay. Um, I'm going to do another one right below it. Copy, paste. I'm just going to tell them to move the mouse to reveal the bat. And this one's going to be at like 300. Perfect.
So here's my update sprites. This is where my control feature goes. So I've got all my background done. Now I'm ready to actually do the work of my if statements. So I want to do control so that if the mouse gets clicked. So if mouse and down the left button, I want to reveal my jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to turn his visibility on. There it is. Now, kind of covers up this stuff down here, which I don't really want it to do. Um, so I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. I'm going to go into my jack o' lantern, go to my resize, I'm going to resize everything. So instead of 126 for the height, I'm going to make it like 75. And there we go, 75 for the height. So now I should be able to push him down in the on this. So this would be like around 370. There we go. Maybe a little too much. So let's do 380. Let's move him back some. Let's put him back at like 50. Okay. Now, I want to also be able to click to turn him invisible. So I want him to click to turn on and click to turn off. So this is going to take a little bit of programming to do. Um, so when the mouse button goes down, it's going to turn invisible if he was invisible. So here's kind of the cool thing that I can do. To toggle him is that I can just say that, he, that it's not jackolantern.visible. So what that does is whatever he was previously, it's going to invert it from the, the other one. So this should now allow me to click, oh yes, click and unclick him to be on. So this allow this is a cool command right here that you can click and unclick to get him to move on and off. I'm also going to create a counter um, with that or increase the counter by one. So this is going to be counter, I'll just call it clicks. Uh, gets clicks plus one. Now it's going to say you don't have a variable clicks that's been declared. So back up here, we're going to create our variable clicks. We're going to set it equal to zero. So now I can run it and I can actually keep track of that property over here on the side. And now it should store all the clicks that I have. Perfect. Now, I want the ghost to come out when I get to 20 clicks. So, I'm going to need another if statement for that. If clicks is greater than 20, what happens? Oh, we're going to turn the ghost visibility. So, ghost not visible becomes true. And we need to set the animation of the coffin so that it looks open. So now let's run this. Okay, we can look at our click counter over in the bottom corner. Here we come up. Boom. Coffin opens. Ghost comes out when it's greater than 20. So 21, it, it changed. Now, could I get this guy to fly away? Sure. I'm going to do that next. So, check out the next video.